All right, so we are back with a live recording of Milk Drunk. <laughs> It is your host, Tabria, and today we are at Gracias Madre celebrating the launch of the second season of the podcast. And we are surrounded by so many people, and everyone here really cares about improving upon the parenting experience. So It's really a great feeling to be surrounded by all of this love in the room. So I'm so excited to get into everything today. <laughs> But in today's episode, we are going to dive into all of Bobby's amazing policy work, like their Parents Push Harder campaign, which I had the pleasure of being a part of, and what they're doing to support the Family Act, which, if passed, would give all workers up to 12 weeks of leave per new child. And who better than to speak to all of this than someone who juggles fatherhood and an award-winning career with impeccable style and endless grace, the original Bobby Daddy, Mr. Tan France. <laughs> But first, I'd like to bring up to the stage Cat Canada. She is Bobby's director of marketing, and she's going to share more with us about how Bobby is fighting for guaranteed paid family leave via the Parents Push Harder campaign and about Bobby's social impact and policy arm, Bobby for Change. So welcome, Kat. Thank you. Thank you. And now it is time to introduce the icon, the legend, the father of all fathers, this unstoppable force who skyrocketed to global fame on the Emmy-winning Netflix show Queer Eye, which is in its ninth season. In addition to starring in and mentoring budding designers on Next in Fashion, this fashion guru who teaches millions how to dress and even cook on social has also written a memoir. He's helped British brides say yes to the dress. He hosted this year's SAG Awards on the Red Carpet Show, and that is just a few of his many accolades. So everyone, please give a warm welcome to Tan Brand. Hi. Thank you. That was silly. I, <laughs> I know. The intros are the best. It's my favorite. <laughs> welcome, Tan. So Hi. Thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure to meet you today. Um, you. I absolutely love your work and I'm such a fan. You're Thank such you. an inspiration. Thank and you. on the last season of the podcast, you just had your second child. Is that right? Yes. Yes. So Gosh, please, it was that long ago. Right, I know. Yeah. So I, how has the transition been from one to two? Give us the updates. What's going on in your life nowadays? Look, there's probably parents here who've got more than two children, so you will think I'm ridiculous, <laughs> but I am barely hanging on. <laughs> it is, no one prepares you. Actually, people say quite the opposite. They're like, oh, if you've got one, you may as well have a second. It's just mm -hmm. the same. You are a liar. Right. <laughs> and you are going to hell yeah. um, because you deceived me because it is the hardest thing yeah. I have ever done. It's so hard. Yeah, that's what But I gorgeous. hear from... for oh, Thanks. <laughs> that's what I hear from all my friends. Like one to two is hectic. I can't imagine, you know, I just have the one now and we're honestly on the fence if we're even going to have another because it's a lot. It's a it's lot. It's a lot of hard work. I do want to make it clear. I didn't have my second one for me because I was done. <laughs> um, but I am old now and I need somebody else to roll around with my first kid. And so it had to be my second. I feel that. <laughs> yeah, let's be real. Um, I mean, we have a great support system. Like my boyfriend's family, they help us all the time and... I just feel so lucky that we have that because when I hear about other people's experience who don't necessarily have help, it's just them on their own. It sounds like a nightmare. Like, uh, they, you know, they are so stressed. So I want to know who is in your village and who's supporting you? Um, emotionally, friends support me. Yeah. Um, physically with my kids, we don't live near any family. Mm. Um, and so we have hired help. We have a nanny that works nine to four, Monday to Thursday. Um, and we could absolutely have somebody that helps us more often, but this is no shade to anyone who has a full-time nanny, but I really want to, I want my kids to really have me there and my mm -hmm. husband there. The people that don't have anyone they can't afford hired help and they don't have family or even a partner, the single moms. Mm -hmm. I want to bear hug every one of them because Literally. I cannot imagine how hard that is. I can barely function with all these people around me and they're doing it on their own. That's insane. Yeah. I, I know a few single moms and 
I literally don't know how they do it. No. How are you juggling work and taking yeah. care of your child and taking care of yourself? Because, yeah. you know, my mental health really, I won't say it took a toll, but it was the first time I really ever dealt with mental health issues, you know, yeah. anxiety, postpartum depression, things like that. And I just couldn't imagine going through that by myself. It's, it's such a shame. And, you know, that's why we're pushing for, you know, family paid leave and just yeah. encouraging our government to do better because they suck. For, unfortunately, yes. Um, but but room, <laughs> major room for improvement. Less, yes. That's okay. <laughs> That's the positive, I know. Yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Silver lining. Yeah. yeah. Um, but before we get into that, do you have any parenting hacks for us? We always ask. <gasps> Gosh, um, you, actually, I do have one that I learned on TikTok. Oh. Um, <laughs> you know, before you have kids, you have this grand plan of how you're going to raise your kids, mm-hmm. and I am. Um, Pakistani, which means they're not going to get anything past me. (laughs) That's not true once you have kids. Everything (laughs) gets past me. Um, But the one thing I learned was to calm my toddler down. Look, my my baby is now three. He turned a week. uh, Sorry, turned three a week ago. And um, that anger that he has towards me every now and then is (laughs) nothing one can prepare a person for. And my knee-jerk reaction, which has never happened, don't worry, is, bitch, who are you talking to? But I don't say that. And instead, I'm like, oh, that's a cute pink shirt you've got on, knowing it's green. And then that resets him. And I learned that from TikTok. Like, you just point something out that's, the, that's not quite right, and your toddler will correct you. And then the tantrum's over. Really? Isn't that insane? Yeah, I'm like taking I know. I need to write that one down. <laughs> it's not me. It's some much better parent, a mother, who taught me that. And I was like, that is wild. It doesn't work every time, but a lot of the time it does. Really? Okay. A redirect. I love that. That's so interesting. I mean, you are gaslighting your kids. I mean, it's (laughs) all right. They're not going to remember that. It's fine. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then when they tell you about that later on in life, they call you out. You're like, that's not true. That never happened. (laughs) Gaslight them again. (laughs) We're not above gaslighting. No. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. So first and foremost, you're a father, obviously, but you are a working parent. You bust your ass, like you mentioned in the video, and you work really hard, as, you know, most parents do. Um, So I really want you to, well, I'll have Kat also explain to everyone how you're such a major advocate, why you're a major advocate for paid leave. Um, But Kat, I'll hand it over to you and how you can... Just expand on how Bobby Tan, pay leave, how we all are related. Before you go into that, I do want to make it really clear to the audience who's listening at home who can't see you. She looks incredible today. This dress is major. Okay, I can go home now. The dress is so good. I know we're here for a much more important message and I can't help be shallow, but that is real good. Thank you. And this is why he's the least douchebag person on the planet and why we continue to come back to work with Tan year over year over year, which is a great segue, actually. Um, So to kind of understand where we are today and what we're talking about today with paid leave, we really actually have to go back three years ago, 2021, which is the first campaign we did with Tan, which to bring you guys all up to speed, we launched a campaign where we changed one little word from how is breastfeeding going to how is feeding going and just that one tweak lit the internet up people had many feels about it and what that showed us was that there's work to be done here and it was that you predating bobby for change that really we used that momentum to launch bobby for change we knew that we need to be part of that conversation to change what american parents were going through all the stigmas from how you feed your babies to if you sleep train them to gaslighting them, right? And that's where Bobby for Change was really born, which is essentially our social policy and impact arm of the business. And we we take up arms essentially against all of the inequities and inequalities and the issues that really face modern parents in America. And one of our pillars this year is paid leave. So that's why we're here today and why we need to talk to you because for all the moms in the audience, we need those partners. We need those dads. We can't do it alone. And what we have found is that 70% of American dads actually return to work full time less than two weeks after the birth of their baby. Should I say that again? 70% of American dads return to work full time 
less than two weeks after a baby. Everyone's in diapers at the house at that point. You know what I mean? (laughs) And you were one of them. And you talked about that, you know, in here is that you went back to work. Luckily, you could work from home, which is such a blessing. But going back to work right after the birth of your baby, and you speak to it because it's something that you both wanted to do, and you didn't have a choice. Yeah. So why do you think, and you talk about this, why do you think parents should have the rights to both take time off and return on their own terms? Gosh, for so many reasons. Um, I, I wish I could give you a simple buttoned up answer, but let us uh, I want to start by saying this. It's not just that they go back to work and it's hard not being with your kid. Don't get me wrong, that's, that is hard for any parent not being with the kid. Mm-hmm. I don't really need them to support the baby as much. Mm-hmm. I need them to support their partner Um, whether your partner's male or female, but in particular, if you've got a partner who birthed that child, Mm -hmm. um, that that mother is going through so much and she could really do with a man's support, the husband or partner's support. Mm -hmm. But even in my same-sex relationship, having one person manage that child pretty much 24-7 and the other one has to go back to work, as you mentioned earlier, your mental health, your mental well-being is compromised at that point. Completely. You can't function quite right. Mm-hmm. You are sleep deprived. And so I don't necessarily need fathers to not return to work to help change a diaper. I need you to be there to help support your partner who is going through it. Mm. So well said. And it's how quickly the inequality, the imbalance in the household Mm -hmm. happens Mm -hmm. when that happens as well, you know, for everyone, for regardless of if you birthed or Mm non-birthed or what your marriage or what your family looks like, that that ends up happening by week two. Yeah. Um, Tabria, I want to kind of ask you the same question. You also have that experience similar to Tan as being, you know, an entrepreneur, a model in, in the entertainer space where you don't have that protected paid leave. What was that experience like for you? Well, I should have done some research beforehand. I just assumed, oh, maybe I'll get a little bit. That'll be a little grocery money. I wasn't expecting much, but, you know, just a couple hundred a month. And when I found out I wouldn't get anything because I'm a freelancer, I was like, dang, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Like, how are, you know, we pay taxes just like everyone else. Why aren't we entitled Mm -hmm. to get the little bit that this country gives us, you Mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And it, our, my situation was kind of unique because um, my boyfriend's an actor and they were on strike basically the last half of the year last year. So I was the only one who was working and I worked up until I was seven months pregnant, which, you know, being a model, that's crazy. Like, you know, and I wasn't doing maternity. I was doing regular modeling work and just concealing my baby as my belly as best as I could. But, I don't even know how that's supposed to Suck it in. Yeah, so we have like a moment, of silence, a moment of silence for that. Like, good on you. I know. How did you do that? That's amazing. I mean, if you work certain angles, yeah. you know, as long as I didn't turn to the side, I yeah. was pretty you much fine. You have skills I will never understand. But, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. And then I went to work. I went back to work um, at eight weeks. Mm. And it was much mm. sooner than I wanted to go back. And, you know, I know everyone thinks being a model is really glamorous, but... It is, it's pretty labor intensive. You're on your feet all day and you're the one that's moving the most out of anyone on set. So it was very taxing on my physical body, on my mental health. It was a lot. And my partner was super supportive and he was holding it down at home and doing everything, you know, he could possibly do. But at the end of the day, we were just waiting on them, like, get these contracts in line. Like, let's go. Come on. But um, but yeah, it's just I just felt really, you know, abandoned, I guess, as a woman, as a parent, as, you know, a, a citizen of this country. You know, I just felt like I was just thrown to the side and nobody cares. And I know, like, I am in a position of privilege having the job that I do and being able to have a flexible work schedule. But it still was something I just wasn't prepared for whatsoever. And I just think it's so important that paid leave is extended to everybody. You know, some some type of system needs to be put in place for freelancers to have access to that as well. That, that You used the right word, abandoned. I've not really heard anyone articulate it that way. And that is absolutely how one would feel in this situation. And it does 
it does worry me that I won't get too political, I promise. But with the laws changing and the abortion laws changing, I'm like, uh huh. You want them to keep the baby, but then when you'll abandon those bitches, like exactly, exactly, oh. yes. yes. It's like you know, one plus one is not equaling two right now. Like, make it make sense. It's it's horrible. Like what they're doing. Like, okay, you want to put all these laws in place, make it so that people can actually do it. Then yeah. you know, it's it's so ridiculous. And also take care of the parents at home, right? Yes. yes. You know, there's laws that need to change to make everyone more successful and everyone thrive and everyone's yeah. well-being at really taking that to heart. And that's what's really where the failure yeah. comes in. Yeah. So you guys both mentioned, um, you know, your return to work quickly. I want to touch there because there's obviously, we are here to advocate that everyone needs to be able to spend time at home. The other for you two is also true that there are some people that's like, I want to get back to work. I want to go talk about the judgment in that. Did either of you feel the judgment yeah. going back a week where people are like, Tan, the yes. hell are you doing here? Or, and how did, My you, mother. How did you, <laughs> how'd you handle that? Yeah. You go first, please. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I think everyone was really shocked when I showed up on set that day. They thought I was, you know, it had been like a few more months than it had been. They were like, it's only been eight weeks. Like, what are you doing here? And, you know, I didn't want to explain my situation to everybody, but I'm just like, well, you know, you got to get back to work. You know, what's I can't just, you know, not work for four. Because at that point, I had already been out of work for four months total. So it's like I, I can't just not have any income coming in. I have to do something. So I, I wouldn't say people were being judgy, but they were more concerned. You know, like, we just want to make sure you're okay. And they were, like, you know, everyone on set was really accommodating, making sure that, um, you know, I could pump when I needed to because I combo fed. So it was it was as feasible an experience as it could be, you know? Right, right. <laughs> uh, the same for me. It wasn't the judgment other than for my mom. I love my mom very much, but my mom's a harsh lady. Um, it, it was more so the concern saying, you've only, this has only happened within the last week. What on earth are you doing on this Zoom or why are you here on set? Mm -hmm. But what they don't realize, and as you said, sometimes you don't want to get into your business in front of, well, everybody's trying to get their job done. Right. The last thing you want is an hour conference, say, well, this is how <laughs> the state of America is. Um, but that is the yeah. horrible truth is, the answer is, I have to go back to work. There's yeah. no option. And mine wasn't financially motivated, thank goodness, but it was contractually. Um, there was no option mm -hmm. other than you've got to get back to work. Yeah. Uh, that was where I was going next, so thank you for yeah. teeing that up. Um, you talk in your video about your unique perspective um, since your family, or since you're from the UK, mm -hmm. but became a father here. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about what, how you think we can change the cultural attitude in America towards yeah. paid leave that will then push the policy forward. Okay, well, uh, I, I realized like, okay. I just got up, I'm like, okay, bitch. <laughs> um, someone grab my purse. Right, listen. <laughs> I've got so many things to say, but I'm going to, I'm going to do these two. I posted about it today and I'm not coming for this person who said this, but somebody commented and said, yeah, those of us who don't, who have chosen to not have kids, really, we should all be pushing for paid time off because there's so many things that I want to explore in my life. I'm like, sit down. Like, that's not what we're talking about. You've got paid vacation. If you don't, that's not my fault, but you've got time to explore your hobbies somewhere else. We're not talking about that. <laughs> And as I said at the start of that video, it's, I think the way we convince people, first and foremost, is, I'm sorry this is going to hurt a lot of women, but I'm just going to say it because it's a fact. Women aren't making the decisions in Congress. It's these douchebag men who have never raised a child and have never been forced to. So as much as you might fight, unless you've got men talking about it too, it's just not going to change. It really isn't. Mm -hmm. I wish we did have women who had the power in Congress to say, mm. I'm making this change whether you like it or not. Mm. We don't. We might have soon, but we don't have that yet. <laughs> and so it takes, first off, these men who are making decisions to help with, I just want them to all to have five hours three hours with a mm. newborn and you tell me that's a fucking break. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to swear a lot. You can yeah. edit it out later. And then... We will not. And then secondly, once you've had those three or four hours with this kid and you understand what it's like to actually 
change a diaper or listen to this baby scream and you can't, uh, you can't console them. At that point, ask the mom, what do you need? Mm. What do you need from me to make this experience better? Mm-hmm. I think that until we get dudes to see this as a non-vacation and that there was one comment on set the first week i got back saying how was your break and i've never wanted to punch someone in the face no more. literally <laughs> yeah and i just thought look at my face i've aged 10 years you think that was a fucking break <laughs> um and so i think that the first step is to really help men understand just what it entails to raise a child mm, yes yes Exactly. And for anyone doing a count at home, I think that's three douchebags of the of the conversation, yeah. which I appreciate. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, we, obviously we agree with you there. And that's exactly why we brought you into this conversation to tee up more men, more inclusive language, mm-hmm. more families, different kind of family makeups to really sh- showcase that it's all of us. Yeah. If it's one mom, it's all moms. Mm -hmm. We say often, if you feed one baby, you're feeding all the babies, right? So how are we pulling everyone in to make this an issue for everyone? Because everyone will thrive. Yeah. Before I pass it back to you, Tabri, I have one more question. And this is something that we, I know we talked early and we were, when we were bringing, um, bringing you in to do this campaign is for you, particularly around privilege. And as a celebrity with a platform and with a mic, (laughs) Why, you know, I I feel like the haters will come for you, like, must be nice. You, this doesn't hit, this doesn't bother you. You're financially not impacted by this. This isn't your issue. Sit down. Mm -hmm. What do you say to those people? And why do you believe that it is actually through your privilege and through your platform that you have to be one of the loudest? It's the, it's the reason I uh, became an entertainer. Um, before I became an entertainer, I retired. I was financially sound. I was a business owner, sold those businesses. I didn't need this job. I did it to represent my people. I wanted to represent Muslims better. I wanted to represent gays better. I wanted to represent brown people better. I wanted them to see our humanity. And I feel the same way about this. If I don't use my privilege, and I, I see it as a responsibility. If I don't use this, what the frick am I doing? Um, there are so many people who don't have this mic. There are so many people who don't have the platform I have who should, who desperately want change. And there are many people who are in my position who should be pushing for change that aren't. And so I'm a really easy target, but I'm also really resilient. And so I think, okay, I'll, I'll speak up. Come for me all you want. You ain't got nothing on me. You can't affect my money. You can't affect my life. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You know, and and thank you for that. You know, and thank you for coming today and adding your voice here and sharing your story. And we're just we're grateful for that. And hopefully, you will be a big part of the change. And we'll see policy move on our in the right direction. Here's hoping. (laughs) And I just want to piggyback off of you. Like, allies are needed in any way to advance the movement forward. And it doesn't. It does matter whose voice it's coming from sometimes, but and with something like this, the more that people speak about it, the more normalized it becomes because right now it's still not taboo, but it's just not talked about often. Mm-hmm. And we need anybody to speak up about it because it's being overlooked because we have so many issues going on today. Mm-hmm. But this is just so important for the advancement of parents and our children and just our future in general. So we need as many allies as we can get. We see what what good policies around parenting and, and the support of parents does in other developed nations. We see what it does for the families yes. and uh, parents and for the children. It's such a damn shame that we don't do anything about it here. We claim we are the greatest nation in the world, and if we can't take care of our families first and foremost, we are not. Mm, period. <laughs> yes. 100% agree. Okay, <laughs> back to me. Well, um, I know we've talked extensively about this, but Tan, is there any last words that you want to say about how to get society to understand that paid leave is essential for everyone, not just mothers, but fathers as well? Um, There was a stat that I heard. It was over 80% of uh, uh, men who stay home with their kids um, for the first two weeks minimum. What a positive impact that has on those kids nine months later when it comes to their development. Those kind of statistics matter. If we truly care about our kids, we need to make sure 
the mother and the father have, parents in general, have the support that they need. So the last thing I will say is this is not just a mother issue. It's not just a father issue. It's a parental issue. Yes. Um, and if we don't change the way things are going right now, we are looking at a future of kids who are not going to develop the way they should. Yes. Agreed. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> well, I just want to thank you, Tan, so much for being on the podcast today. And Kat, thank you for sharing us uh, sharing with us about all the insight that Bobby's doing, all the work they're doing for paid leave. And I will be here to support always. And I know all these wonderful people in the room will be here to support you as well. And uh, Tan, always, thank you for your invaluable insight, thank sharing you. your experience with us. Please tell us where we can find you. Plug everything. <laughs> Very simple. I'm mostly active on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> and if you have Netflix, I'm all over that. Yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much for coming on thank today. You. I hope we can do another episode soon, I'm later sure down the line. Will. And I'm your host, Tabria. It was so cool doing a live episode. Yay, Yay Tabria! Yeah. <laughs> and that concludes the live episode of Milk Drop. Woo! Yeah. <laughs>